All right, we have people filtering in. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're just going to take a couple seconds to let um, everybody filter in from the waiting room. Hi, Valentina. <laughs> Great to see you again. <laughs> All right. Um, well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Amy Owen, and I'm the executive director of the Marin Museum of Contemporary Art. And we're thrilled to have the opportunity to celebrate the recent opening of our current exhibition, Happenstance and to acknowledge all of our talented artists and award winners this evening. I'm especially excited to be joined by our juror Zoe Talaporos, who was instrumental in bringing the project to fruition and to have a chance to talk more with her this evening. Zoe is a curator, arts administrator, and writer based in Oakland. Hi, Zoe. <laughs> she currently works as a public art project manager at the San Francisco Arts Commission, where she's involved in commissioning a wide range of artworks for public spaces. She also co-organizes co Premier Junior, uh, an amazing project and exhibition space that commissions new work by Bay Area artists on a six by 12 foot billboard in San Francisco's Inner Sunset. She was previously co-director and curator of the Royal Nonsuch Gallery in Oakland, as well as Queen's Nails projects in San Francisco. As an independent curator, she has implemented exhibitions and public programs for the California College of the Arts, Headland Center for the Arts, Pro Arts, among many, many others. Her writing has also been published by KQED Arts, Art Practical, and MIT Press. And she also received her MA in curatorial practice from the California College of the Arts. Welcome, Zoe. So Happenstance marks Marin Mocha's 2021 Winter National Juried Exhibition and highlights the work of 20 artists from around the country. We're incredibly grateful to all of the artists that applied to the call. I believe we had close to 400 artists in total submit applications. The show draws from the concept of serendipity and demonstrates how fortunate accidents or unexpected events often contribute to serendipitous results in the art making process. So this evening we'll have a chance to dive a bit deeper into some of the works on view in the exhibition and to chat more about their processes and how they relate to the prompt. But before we get started, I just wanted to share a few housekeeping notes regarding the format for our talk. Zoe and I will chat for about 20 minutes or so and then open things up to questions from the audience. So please feel free to drop any questions directly into the Q&A box as we move through the talk. So um, Zoe, I know in terms of kind of your conceptualization of the theme and um, one of your guiding principles, at least in your selection process, was really kind of looking to works that um, demonstrated a reverence to a process over the end result or the outcome. And I wondered if you could kind of start by telling us a bit about um, what initially drew you to this theme um, and your overarching impressions of the scope of the works that you saw through the process. I know it's um, definitely not an easy task viewing works digitally on screen. So that kind of presents um, a, lot of, a lot of challenges in and of itself, but um, it would also be great to hear you share a bit more about your um, work at the San Francisco Arts Commission, which engages you in working at and looking at work um, at a significant level all of the time. So, and I know that really informs your practice as well. So I'll let you kind of take it away from here. Yeah, thank you so much, Amy. Um, and hi, everyone. I'm Zoe. Nice to kind of virtually be in the same room with you. Um, yeah, it was a real honor to be asked to curate the show and um, a real joy to look at everybody's work and um, learn about some new artists. And um, yeah, it was an absolute joy to put this together. 
Um, I think, you know, in terms of the prompt, um, the, uh, the organizing principle of the exhibition, um, you know, I wanted to, I, you know, not knowing who was going to apply, <laughs> I wanted to, to uh, present a theme that would be sort of broad enough to allow a lot of different kinds of work um, to be um, uh, presented, but um, also to allow enough room for there to be sort of some kind of subcategories of curatorial themes that could exist in the show. Um, and, you know, I do think that there's a good amount of happenstance that sort of ha happens naturally in the um, art making process. Um, but thinking about, you know, coming out of the pandemic in particular and um, having um, a lot more restrictions sort of put around artists' art, art making practice. I've been kind of interested in how artists um, are sort of like uniquely situated um, in turning these uh, parameters and seemingly, uh, you know, challenging obstacles into opportunities. Um, and that kind of dovetails into my, my work um, as a public art administrator. Um, so much of what the artists I work with deal with are, um, are very challenging restraints. And so I think that um, when those things come at you and you um, turn them into opportunities that can actually aid your art practice is what uh, I find very exciting and what I think artists are sort of uniquely um, positioned to do more than the rest of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome, thank you for that. Um, I thought before we kind of dive into some more specific details of um, our award distinctions from the exhibition that we could take a peek at um, some of the installation, just kind of general installation views of the show for those who um, perhaps were not able to join us for the opening, which just happened this last Saturday. So I'll just kind of roll through these. Um, I will say we had um, quite a few artists in the exhibition who traveled from quite a distance um, and suspect that they are joining us this evening as well. Um, if anyone's inclined to just kind of raise their hand virtually to let us know that they're in the audience, that would be great. I'd love to, um, <laughs> hey Tali, <laughs> to uh, chat with you um, virtually further as we move along. But it really is just such a nice selection of works and so nice to see multiple objects by, um, by artists included. Yeah, going back to your question around um, or your comment about um, my work at the Arts Commission and um, viewing works digitally um, often, <laughs> um, you know, that we uh, all of our all of our public art opportunities are open calls, and so I'm very used to looking at um, images in virtual form. It's never, you know, it's never the same thing as looking at everything in person. So I was really thrilled to be able to go into the space and see things um, in person. Um, but you know, I think in terms of selecting these these artworks in particular. Um, I was looking for work that just really stood out to me in terms of its originality. And that um, is uh, in terms of like originality and what happened in the process that an artist was sort of capitalizing on, um, but also in terms of just like a unique um, point of view or um, a unique point of view or, or vision. Um, and I do think that when you're looking at work visually um, online, um, things tend to pop out at you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, Absolutely. I mean, just on like a very basic level, a lot of these works were just very unique in my opinion and um, interesting or made me um, think about them and go back to them and wanna know more. So um, it's, it's a bit unusual curating in this way, but um, that was sort of how I approached it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing how sometimes I can actually, the, that limited framework can actually benefit or 
um, emphasize certain aspects of, of the work. Um, well, why don't we just get right into it? Um, let's start with our, our your honorable mentions that were selected. Um, I should say that these were selected um, blindly as well. Zoe, you are not aware of the artists' names or um, as you were sort of reviewing the works in situ in the gallery. Um, but here we have Lynn Brightfeller, After the Fire, Water Damaged Film, Sylvia from 2021. And Zoe, I wonder if you could kind of share some of your initial impressions about this piece. Um, sure. So, um, you know, this, I had not seen any other images that looked like this in the, um, in the submissions. These were exceptionally unique and interesting to me. Um, there was, I selected three for the exhibition and they all had this kind of haunting quality that I thought was really, just really beautiful and also somewhat timeless. You know, you, you look at this, this artwork and the others that were selected and you kind of can't tell what time frame that they're from. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so I loved that this, uh, this fire and the water damage kind of became this unintentional collaborator in the work and that the artists, um, you know, had kind of created the, the canvas essentially for this process to happen. Um, and then, um, you know, accepted the outcome and um, didn't try to alter it further, that it sort of became a piece um, sort of on its own uh, was very unique and interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are really beautiful. I was kind of getting um, paranormal vibes from them initially, like ectoplasm, sort of those historic photos that I <laughs> you see uh, they're very beautiful yeah, yeah this I one love in that particular I thought was really wonderful because the the smoke um is emphasized in mm -hmm. by you know it just it could not have been more perfect the way that the um the water damage um actually accentuated the the photograph so mm -hmm. just really really gorgeous mm -hmm. beautiful thank you and here we have Nancy Brown's Little Miss Sunshine from 2018, um, comprised of found, salvaged, and repurposed materials. And yeah. this is actually a yeah wall sculpture. Um, again, you know, there was nothing else really like this in the um, submission pool, and I I loved that the work um, used very humble materials that you can kind of find. Um, lying around your house. Um, and um, there are all sorts of associations that you can draw from this. And it's so incredibly simple. You know, it, it kind of acts like a line drawing. And, you know, the title sort of infers that the, you know, it, it, I don't know if that's like a Ethernet cord or something. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like, like the bow and the hair or, um, you know, there's all sorts of um, associations you could make with this. So I thought it was really playful and very simple and um, yeah, just very interesting. Yeah, it's a beautiful assemblage. And here we have Hui Min Zhuang, Mystical Birds Quincy from 2021. Um, I was, I was talking to you about this in the gallery a little bit during my visit. And, um, you know, I love, I, I'm kind of a sucker for just drawings generally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and um, when I was going through the submissions, the artist described this as a, a blind contour drawing process, which is um, something when I was in art school was one of the first things that I, that I learned to do in drawing class and that I absolutely loved, you know, the, the outcomes are always really, um, not what you think and, um, really like, it, uh, plays on the artist's intuition and the artist's, um, sort of hand and eye and kind of like inner, inner guidance, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. in order to create the work. Um, and so, you know, I think that the, the sort of bones of the drawing um, are kind of offered to you in that process. 
Um, and I just love the way this artist um, chose to sort of leave some of that blind co contour, those lines sort of bare, and then fill in the rest with this kind of fantastical, um, lush landscape. And so to me, I can get a real sense of kind of the, the sort of essence of this environment. Um, and in, in a way that's not like a very, like technically precise, you know, methodical drawing. So I, I just thought that was really fun and wonderful. Yeah, these are super fun. It's um, hard to render the vibe, you know, the vibrancy of the color here on screen. Um, but that psychedelic, the psychedelic aspect of them in person and together is really, um, really fun as well. Yeah, and I can't, I'm not totally sure what's going on. It looks like there's these sort of mystical peacocks that are, or uh -huh. birds that are perched on the branches. So mm -hmm. um, I just, I love that element of sort of um, fantasy, um, in, you know, infused in the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of like dreamscapes. Very beautiful. And here we have Tracy Grubbs, Rain Listening number six from 2017. Another kind of collaborative um, partner in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I couldn't find my notes on this, uh, but from what I remember from the submission, um, I believe there's three or four of these that were selected for the exhibition and they're part of a series of works where the artist is kind of collaborating with with the weather. <laughs> um, mm. So I, I believe that there's water in a cup with ink and um, somehow rain is kind of creating these um, these forms. And I apologize if the artist is here and I'm not um, totally remembering that correctly. But, um, you know, in this in this instance, there is a total reliance on chance um, in order to create the work. Um, and they just create these like very beautiful, simple compositions that um, are quite elegant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here we have Katerina Hazel. This work was one of those that I was like, I'm not sure what I'm looking at, <laughs> but then I kept coming back to it and I'm like, what is going on here? And from what I remember, I believe this is the artist's, um, like a favorite shirt of the artist that um, um, had been sort of worn to the point where it wasn't able to be like, a, you know, you, like you can't wear this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I love that the artist kind of, you know, distills it back down into its sort of basic material um, mm -hmm. and uses it as, a, as an artwork. Um, so it becomes this sort of memorial, memorial to the shirt itself. Um, so it has like another second life, but um, also becomes kind of a portrait of the artist herself as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, in this instance, the sort of happenstance is like, well, you know, this, my favorite shirt is not able to be worn anymore, but it can still have another life as, as an artwork. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think what might not be so clear from the photo here is that um, the shirt is actually embedded in handmade paper. It sort of has this like preserved archival quality to the presentation itself. Yeah, it's sort of wow. reduced back down to its elemental properties of like being a collection of fibers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our wardrobes in lockdown. <laughs> Let's see here. And here we have Tali Kushmar Lang's work, A Day Punctuated by Progeny from 2021. Yeah, I love these. I, I love this work. Um, so, you know, they, they're sort of reminiscent of tree trunks um, and just kind of markers of time. Um, and the way I understand the piece is that it's, um, their line drawings kind of based on a day with the dots representing kind of punctuations during the day um, necessitated by childcare. Um, so made during the pandemic when, um, 
you know, parents are now being faced with having to take care of their kids in a totally different way while working. Um, you know, I thought that this was um, an incredible, um, an incredible um, representation of that time itself. And just the sort of monotony that we experienced in the lockdown and also just, you know, um, the simplicity of having time interrupted um, and just a whole new way of kind of like relating to um, relating to time during that during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And also, it's just a very simple, beautiful drawing. <laughs> it really is. It's it's so striking. Um... In the installation itself too it just kind of really grabs you um, as you walk into that particular gallery it's um so gorgeous in its simplicity and then the last of our honorable mentions is cindy ostroff with praying for rain from 2020. yeah i thought this was just such a joyful um joyful, happy accident. Um, it was made, I think, when the artist rolled over a tube of paint in uh, her garage. <laughs> um, so, you know, just very like simple, simple acts <laughs> of, yeah. um, that can like, create these, these accidents. Um, and I love the title, um, you know, just, um, as the ink or paint is sort of reminiscent of, of rainfall. Um, and I imagine this was uh, created during, um, you know, the time during the pandemic where um, there was no rain, maybe the fire season had happened, but mm -hmm. um, so also like a really unique snapshot in time. Absolutely. Again, another, the image doesn't do the work justice. There's a lot of, um, of texture and luminescence to this work that is difficult to see here, unfortunately. And now for our um, third, second, and first place winners of the show, we have Brian Florentin's Untitled Studio Construction 11 from 2021. Yeah, these are these. This work is so incredible in person too. Um, I remember walking through the gallery with you, Amy, and um, you know, one of your remarks was like, "I can't, you know, you can't tell if it's a photograph or if it's an actual object when you mm -hmm. see it, particularly in person." Mm -hmm. And so I really appreciate that um, that sense of um, play on like, what is the what what are you looking at? Is it the object itself, or is it the is the photograph the object? Um, and again, I sort of liked the idea of this um, shelf being the kind of parameter for which the artwork could exist. Mm -hmm. And the um, that just sort of dictates what the, the forms actually were. Um, and I just kind of imagine the artist kind of cramming all this stuff into that space and having the uh, um, you know, having the composition sort of like develop on its own. Um, there's the inclusion of like a, a photograph in there, which is a little bit hard to see. And I actually didn't notice it until I saw the work in, in person, but it's a, um, a figure that's kind of sandwiched in, um, in like sort of encased in earth. And um, so I kind of imagine that the artist may have um, been referencing like sort of another body of work that they had done um, or, um, you know, another body, body of work that they had done or, or something that they were inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, I also love the inclusion of the box that says miscellaneous fragments, which um, I'm assuming was just, you know, I'm assuming all of this is kind of found studio material. Mm -hmm. um, on hand, um, but that box in particular kind of um, it kind of titles the piece in a way, so it sort of serves another purpose, which I thought was really clever. Yeah, I love the installation of this work too in our um, in our building, which is you know kind of embedded into um, some wing walls that um, also in in case 
storage and shelving. It's kind of a nice, um, really feels almost like embedded into the wall in terms of the installation and with the, um, the high resolution quality of the image itself. It really, um, it's really pretty striking. It's very cool. In second place, we have Annalena Sawyer, Textile Painting 3, Shelter in Place series from 2020. Yeah, again, another example of an artist sort of using materials on hand during the pandemic to make work. Um, it is so hard to see the, um, the beautiful details in this piece and the other ones that are included in the exhibition in this slide, but um, you know, the, the work, in my opinion, um, like really, um, really like embodied the idea of like sort of process dictating form. Um, you know, the, the fabrics themselves are kind of explored for what their material properties are and, you know, how stiff they are, how loose the, the weave is, how they interact with each other. Um, how, how stretchy they are, like what the limitations of each fabric are. Um, there's also interaction with, um, with the sewing machine along the edges, I believe. I'm not sure, or it, it, maybe it's throughout the whole work, but um, you know, the fabric is also kind of like dictating the preciseness of those lines and um, you know, essentially all of the materials in the process are dictating like what the artist's hand can be. Um, so I just love that in terms of like, um, you know, the, the artist really like letting the materials speak to her and like create to, in order to create the work. Mm -hmm. um, I also thought this was really amazing, uh, ama like an amazing painterly composition in the end. Um, and is really in dialogue with um, a lot of like female textile artists that are getting a lot of recognition now, um, kind of in conversation with um, like male painter, painters of the abstract tradition. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think that there's like something um, very like current about the work in terms of that, that particular dialogue as well. Absolutely. These are so stunning in person too. It's really, again, so hard to see them on screen, but there's um, so much texture and color going on in, in all three of the, the works that are included. And then for our first place winner, we have Christina Nobleman with Fractured Four from 2021. Yeah, this, this work was also made um, by way of a happy accident, <laughs> um, which was, you know, um, creasing in the paper during a printing process. Um, and as I understand it, the artist, you know, had originally viewed the work as mistakes, but then that ended up informing an entirely new body of work. Um, and process for the artist. So what was, um, you know, maybe something considered unfortunate turned out to be very fortunate for her. Mm -hmm. um, the work itself is, um, you know, has this kind of like very natural quality um, and in, incredible, like unique, a, a very unique quality in terms of the final image. I almost see them as like you're looking under a microscope at like fibers or, you know, splintered wood or something like that. You can't really tell exactly what what it is. Um, but when you get up close to the work, there's enough of the process that's still kind of revealed um, so that you understand it as like a very basic, um, you know, kind of distilled to like the two basic um, collaborators, like the paper itself and the limitations of the paper and the printing process as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are just gorgeous. Um, and again, need to be seen in person. Um, there are, th are three actually in the exhibition. Um, Zoe, thank you so much for your comments. Those are it was so generous and insightful. Um, I would love to open things up to the audience for 
questions, any of the artists who would like to contribute any further um, thoughts, details about their work, their process. Um, we do have a few questions that have come through. Um, Nancy Brown, um, who created the wall sculpture with the yellow ethernet um, cable, Little Miss Sunshine mentions that the, hor the horizon line in the photograph follows the line of the magazines as well. But actually, I'm wondering what, I'm not exactly sure what that is referring to. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not about her work actually. <laughs> and then um, just an anonymous question regarding Brian Florentin's work, asking if it's a photograph or 3D. Um, it is a photograph, just to clarify that. Nancy clarifies I'm referring to the second place winner. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Here we go. Great. Um, we do have a question or a comment. Um, given the theme of the exhibit, why did we decide not to include the artist's explanations of how the works were created. Um, and that, that's a great question. I think it's actually something we unfortunately didn't discuss um, given sort of the timeline we were working under, I think often informs some of these decisions, um, unfortunately, but I think there's also a beauty to be able, being able to look at the work um, sort of unhindered and sort of um, without that context, but, um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts about. Yeah, that. I think in hindsight, it might've been nice to include like a supplemental, um, that, you know, um, that included a little bit more information about each of these pieces. Um, I mean, for me, I was, uh, I was looking at these sort of blindly and, um, a lot of the pieces I chose were sort of kind of based on some of the things, you know, the experience of um, looking at them without much information and what kind of, you know, kind of connotations I was um, uh, deciphering sort of on my own. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that's a good idea to maybe offer um, some additional um, ways for people to kind of go a little deeper into the work if they're mm -hmm. if they're curious so yeah we can talk about that offline <laughs> if yeah. you'd like Amy yeah no I think it's a great comment um it would be great to have sort of an index of um of, you know sort of that background narrative for folks to reference absolutely um let's see Just looking at some of these other questions. In response to that, um, we have someone who actually says, I, you know, I actually liked the explanations being left for the jurors talk. So that as viewers, we could form a point of view and then be offered a new perspective when learning about the artist's intent leader. Thank you for that. We have a question here um, asking, were awards chosen after works were hung at the museum or was it before? And the awards were actually selected um, once the works were hung during, in, after installation. Let's see. So I'm just kind of looking through the chat here. Is there anything that you'd like to elaborate on? I did receive a lot of just very positive feedback from artists I spoke to um, at the opening, just saying how much they responded to the theme of happenstance and its relevance to their, their work and practice and really, um, inspired them to, to submit, which is great.
That's really, that's nice to hear. I mean, um, yeah, just to sort of reiterate, I see another question about how the theme was oh. selected for the show. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, just, I, I do think that given the the constraints of the time we're living in, <laughs> um, you know, I, I really felt for artists in this time, um, you know, in certain cases, you know, people that I know were, didn't have access to their studios anymore, um, or they had um, had to consider childcare in in a you know new way, um, and all of those things really affect um, you know like a sort of uh, the way that you're used to normally working. And so, um, my own experience. I mean, I I did a lot of thinking during that time about like how can how can I like make best use of this time? How can I turn this into like a positive? situation. Um, and I know a lot of people were thinking like that too, like learning new skills and, um, you know, um, trying out new things. And so I was just kind of curious, like how, how this time really did like affect artists and not all the worker in the, in the exhibition um, was made during the pandemic, but I, like I stated before, I think that um, artists do have this unique ability to kind of um, work with the constraints that they're given um, and still be able to create beautiful, wonderful things. So um, I just, you know, coming out of the lockdown, it, that was very fresh in my mind. Um, so that's one of the reasons that the show, um, the, sh the, the theme um, was created. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you, Zoe. Um, we have some comments about the decision to include several works from each artist, um, you know, at, which is really appreciated um, as the repetition within the context of constraint is rev revelatory in this kind of process for many of the artists. And then we conversely have a question regarding, you know, why with over 400 submissions were only 20 artists chosen. Um, but I know Zoe, that was, that was definitely a part of your process in terms of kind of thinking about, um, a coherency with the installation itself. Yeah, that's kind of a, um, a curatorial decision that I often make is, um, you know, I personally like to, um, highlight multiple works of an artist, um, in an exhibition rather than a singular work, um, over the decision to to add more artists to the show. Um, sometimes I think that when you show more than one piece, you it gives more information for you to be able to understand the process or the intent of mm -hmm. the artists a little bit better and how the works of um, their how their work relates to other artists in the show. Um, so that wasn't a decision kind of unique to Marin Mocha. That's something I, I often do as a curator. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, we have another um, question comment here um, saying I noticed that there is a large number of works that include textiles in various forms in the exhibition. Could you say more about why you think that is or what relevance textiles in particular might have to the theme? Hmm. Um... That's a good question. I, um, I mean, I, I think that uh, I'm, I'm drawn to kind of more, I'm, I'm drawn to unusual um, techniques <laughs> in general, not necessarily the materials themselves, but I think, you know, um, the uh, textile pieces in particular uh, we're sort of like demonstrating a, an experimentation that I found very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I um, tend to gravitate more towards work that are kind of pushing the boundaries of what the material limitations are of, you know, whatever material an artist is working with. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, that kind of process is something that I value a lot, lot um, rather than um, uh, more traditional uses of materials. Mm -hmm. 
We have a question here, Zoe, for you. How, how do the titles impact your selection process and choices, if at all? Um, they didn't. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I even had access to the titles until after the work was selected. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, once I was able to see the work in person and I was given the checklist of information, then there were, you know, some of some of the pro the titles did influence, I think, my understanding of the work and um, maybe influenced the selection of the prizes. Um, mm -hmm. But um, the initial selection was was totally blind. So, mm -hmm. um, but I do think in a lot of the the selected artworks, the titles really do enhance the pieces. Absolutely. Is there anything else? Hmm. The exhibition has a large percentage of women artists. Can you can you comment on that? Yeah, we were talking about this before um, this started. That was also unintentional, um, but um, something I was happy to see. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah, I didn't have access to the names of any of the artists, um, so or their CVs or, or any other information. So basically just the images and the um, whatever descriptions were provided was what I was going off of. Um, so it does show that, you know, those, those descriptions are important <laughs> when you're submitting work. Um, yeah, I'm not sure um, why it ended up that there are so many women artists, but um, I was happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, um kind of serendipitous <laughs> results of the exhibition. Indeed. Mm, we have a question here. Um, are there any plans to include sound or other media formats um, in future exhibitions? Um, absolutely. I think the calls are, you know, relatively open in terms of the media. So, um, we hope to continue to expand what we're presenting in the gallery for sure. Zoe, are there any other works in the show? I know it was really difficult to um, to winnow down to the you know the final few in terms of the award winners. It's the kind of situation that you hope you can um, you know distinguish everyone that's engaged, and it is nice that it's such a you know, very, it's a very tight um, selection and a very tight exhibition, but I just wondered if there's any, any other work that you might wish to comment on um, before we sign off. Sure, if, if you don't mind um, scrolling back to the exhibition images, I can you bet. To some of those. Absolutely. Yeah, we can start here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I love these two wall pieces in juxtaposition with each other too. I just want to um, say that, you know, your installation team did a wonderful job of kind of choosing really nice um, places to really like let the artwork sing. Um, and so for the geniuses, yeah, they were, it's so good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I think with the the work that's underneath the the happenstance um, title, um, you know, I just loved this um, this like simple fold and what that can create in terms of like um, um, forms and other types of associations that can occur. Um, you know, I wasn't able to really figure out exactly what the source imagery of this uh, work was or how it was created, but I was so incredibly intrigued by it. And, um, you know, to me, it, like really read as um, um, sort of like a celebration of like nature and like simple forms that you kind of happen upon. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought that this was like so um elegant and, um, you know, celebratory of um, just kind of like simple, natural things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I kept thinking about like geologic time when I was looking at 
the series of works. There's um, two additional here on this left side of the entry way that kind of just provide um, multiple viewpoints of, you know, kind of riffing off the, the theme and the material, which is really mm -hmm. beautiful. Um, and the painting that we're looking at in the center of this, I thought was also really lovely. Um, you know, the um, choice to sort of work with the canvas and it's uh, not just as like a base for the artwork, but as the artwork itself was really interesting to me. Um, and to really let the materials, the like limitations of that kind of dictate where the work, uh, like how the work became what it is. Mm -hmm. um, the stripe in the center was also just like a really nice addition um, and kind of reminds me of like Mark Rothko paintings or something like that, but a more kind of contemporary experimental approach to um, that kind of more traditional painting form. Mm hmm Absolutely. It's just super striking and just um, such a tactile work that's, that's very intriguing. Um, I should mention this piece is Anna Rybots, and then um, the prior works that we were discussing um, were by Angelica Trimble Yanu. Yeah, it was so hard to um, limit. <laughs> I mean, I just really I fell in love with all of the painful. pieces in this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, a truly painful process. <laughs> um, we the meetings are not of... great. <laughs> it's a little, they're a little dark. Lighting is tough in here. A few different sight lines. Oops, excuse me. Yeah, I thought if you go back to the last one, I thought that these were really nice in relationship also to the kind of line contour drawings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to me, this was like an artist kind of um, maybe having like a lexicon of forms that they use um, and um, kind of like using them a little bit more lyrically um, to sort of um, let the compositions kind of um, occur in a more natural um, way. I think, um, you know, one of the things that I was looking for, I, I guess, is like um, a bit of a, a like a, a letting go um, or um, like not so controlled in, in form. Um, you know, I think that's a little bit more interesting to me sometimes than somebody that's like very um, skilled at technique. And sometimes you have to have that, that skill in order to kind of break it down and then let something else kind of occur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are super fun and loose, really, really playful. Couple different views. Yeah, and um, you know, I always love <laughs> a good abstract painting as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that's kind of the beautiful examples here. Mm -hmm. Right. That's and I think in in these cases, there's like decisions to leave the canvas either plain or just gessoed. I can't, I don't really recall, but the um the improvisational nature of this type of work, I think is um, like really at the, like the heart of, um, you know, kind of listening to your intuition and kind of letting whatever process happens, like dictate the outcome. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a little bit more of a classic, you know, way of approaching that. But um, I was also just very drawn to the, the color scheme of these. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful choice of, of palette. Mm -hmm. Very seductive in the space. These are just a few kind of overview installation views. Here we can see the other two works by Christina and for scale. And these are the three works by Tracy. Grubs, collaborations with, with rain and weather. 
And that's, that's it. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining us. This was just such an incredible um, pleasure, Zoe, to have you share such thoughtful um, commentary on the works and are so grateful for your time and, um, you know, sharing your expertise and, you know, your perspective with us. This was um, just tremendous. And we're so thrilled to have the works on view um, in the gallery here at the museum through the 23rd of December. Um, and yes, um, just have a question regarding availability of this Zoom recording um, will be um, online following um, the talk. So we have recorded it. Um, are there any other questions before we sign off? We hope you'll have a chance to come visit us in person. And I'm so grateful to all the artists who applied um, and also have participated and who attended the opening. It was just such a, a joy to meet everyone and have a chance to talk with you in person. So, so thank you all so much. And um, we'll look forward to staying in touch. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks Zoe. Okay, take care.